Again, a discussion underway still of the runway that uh, will be selected uh, as the final runway for Columbia's landing. Columbia on track, though, for touchdown around 8.16 a.m. Central Time. Altitude now 146 statute miles as Columbia free falls toward its encounter with the atmosphere. That will occur at an altitude of about 75 miles in about 13 minutes as it uh, continues west, uh, encountering the atmosphere above the Pacific Ocean to the north of the Hawaiian Islands. Willie, we're with you on remaining APU Stark. Pilot Willie McCool calling down that he's starting the two remaining auxiliary power units on board now, so all three will be up and running. They supply power for the shuttle's hydraulic systems. And we're ready, Willie. No deltas. Copy, no deltas. Columbia's altitude now 135 statute miles as it continues to descend toward the atmosphere above the Pacific Ocean. All activities are going smoothly on board. Columbia on track toward a touchdown at the Kennedy Space Center shuttle landing facility runway at 8.16 a.m. Central Time. Evaluations are still ongoing of runway selection, which end of the runway Columbia will approach. Currently targeted for runway 33 there, however. With uh, Columbia on track for landing, we'll now go to the Kennedy Space Center for an update there on preparations to receive Columbia after its 16-day scientific journey. This is Kennedy Space Center shuttle ground operations. After a flawless 16 days in orbit for Columbia, all is in readiness for its return to the shuttle landing facility. On orbit 255, Columbia will be crossing the Florida Panhandle entering a portion of the Gulf of Mexico and then crossing the coastline once again near Crystal River, moving inland to Orlando and then proceeding eastward toward the Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral. Most of the final landing preparations were completed on Friday. All of the convoy vehicles and their support systems were turned on and checked out, and there was a thorough sweep of the runway to check for possible debris. That sweep was repeated again this morning. The landing team began arriving at 6 a.m. and had an initial tag up and landing status briefing at 6.45. All team members required to be at their assigned stations at the runway at 7.15. There was a final briefing by the convoy commander to the landing team at 7.45. The 20 landing convoy vehicles were deployed to the end of the runway at 8.15 this morning. The shuttle landing facility at KSC is 15,000 feet long and 300 feet wide, about a third longer and twice as wide as a runway at a major commercial international airport. It is located about three miles northwest of the Houston, Complex 39 the Vehicle Assembly Building. STS-107 marks the 62nd landing of the Space Shuttle Orbiter at the KSC runway. Following landing and return to the hangar, Columbia will be deserviced and then processed for its next mission this fall. Currently, the weather observation at the shuttle landing facility 
has a temperature of 52 degrees with winds westerly at five knots. The expected high during the day today on the runway while deservicing de Columbia is underway is expected to be around 69 degrees with winds from the west-northwest 12 to 18 knots. Astronaut Kent Rongemer, accompanied by educator astronaut Barbara Morgan, began flying weather reconnaissance around the Cape Canaveral vicinity at 6.15 this morning and over the last hour and a half have been flying approaches to the runway in the shuttle training aircraft. Rominger is reporting his observations back to Houston to weather astronaut Dwayne Carey and to the NOAA National Weather Service Spaceflight Meteorology Group. The Milo tracking station at KSC will acquire Columbia about 13 minutes before landing and will begin supplying controllers in Houston with voice, data, and telemetry communications starting about a minute later. At 11 minutes before touchdown, the orbiter will begin receiving navigation signals from the TACAN, which is the homing beacon, and the navigation signal at the shuttle landing facility. As Columbia intercepts the heading alignment circle, the first video should become available, and Columbia will cross directly overhead of the SLF, heading out over the Atlantic Ocean, making a gradual right turn toward a seven-mile final approach to runway 33, if that is the runway that is finally determined. That would be a southeast to northwest approach. Columbia's weight as it touches down on the runway will be 234,000 pounds. It will touch down at about 204 knots. After the orbiter's landing rollout is complete, there will then be the usual safety inspections, the so-called sniff checks to look for any toxic propellants, which may have leaked or be venting, and the astronauts will configure switches in the cockpit for post-landing activities and participate with the KSC ground operations team to safe the vehicle. When the vehicle is deemed safe, all of the potential hazards and determination is made that there are no toxic gases around the orbiter. The purge and coolant umbilical access vehicle will move into position at the rear of the orbiter. Here we see the shuttle training aircraft with Kent Rominger, accompanied by Barbara Morgan, making approaches to the runway, making a final uh, assessment as to the landing conditions and the runway of choice. After the purge and cooling system connections, the crew transport vehicle will be moved into position adjacent to the orbiter access hatch on Columbia's point port side, and there will be a cursory inspection of the thermal protection system tiles, the wheels, and the other landing gear systems. About 45 minutes after landing, work will also begin to remove the orbiter's external tank separation camera. A physician will board Columbia shortly after the landing convoy arrives at Columbia's position on the runway. They will conduct a brief preliminary examination of the astronauts before the crew leaves the orbiter, and then the astronauts can make preparations to disembark and enter the crew transport vehicle for further medical evaluations. Because there are several medical test objectives for the crew this time, it will be longer than usual before the astronauts leave the shuttle landing facility runway, Four of the astronauts must remain reclined until this medical data can be collected while they are in the crew transport vehicle and through their return to the medical facilities at the astronaut quarters, which is located in the operations and checkout building about five miles south of the shuttle landing facility. So we expect to see only Commander Rick Husband, Pilot Willie McCool, and Flight Engineer Dr. Kalpana Chavla leave the crew transport vehicle and do the traditional walk around of the space shuttle orbiter. Because of the numerous life sciences experiments and test samples that must be removed from Columbia and the space hab while it's still on the runway, the start of the operation to tow Columbia to its hangar will not begin until very late this afternoon. Once back at the astronaut quarters, all of the crew will undergo thorough physical examinations then have lunch and see their immediate family members, and they currently plan to go home to Houston on Sunday. Columbia's next mission is STS-118 in mid-November, planned to deliver the S-5 truss segment to the International Space Station, and the six-member crew will include NASA educator astronaut Barbara Morgan. Visibility and continuing to improve as we move toward our projected 9.16 a.m. landing time. And all convoy 
vehicles are in position ready to support the touchdown and rollout. From the shuttle landing facility, this is the Kennedy Space Center Ground Operations Control Center.